Welcome to episode 86 of the Talking Fires podcast. Ben Fadden here again, finally back uh, with Jacob Zimmerman. Jacob, what's going on? Nothing much, nothing much. Glad to be back, glad to be back. Yeah, we got so first time together on the podcast here in 2022. Uh, not much has changed. Uh, still a lockout, still really nothing going on. And the only news, uh, baseball-wise, coming just from anywhere, uh, is about a reporter and a former Padre. So Cameron Maben re- recently retired. Uh, I, I kind of wrote about that on Gaslamp Ball a little bit. His trade that ended his Padres tenure, you know, going to the Braves and that whole Melvin Upton and Craig Kimbrell deal, uh, that probably, you know, shouldn't have happened in hindsight. That I mean, getting Kimbrell was great and all that, and they turned that into. Manuel Margot, which turned into, uh, you know, what Tommy Pham and Cronenworth eventually. So I guess if you keep moving it around yeah. in the chain, I guess it's turned out good. But Maven, he had those two years in what 2011, 2012, where he played. Uh, you know, he was the center fielder, stole 40 bases in one year. He was the team MVP. Uh, but then just couldn't really stay healthy. Obviously, they trade him. And then he just starts going to different teams. I mean, he w- but it was a long career, and that just shows that he was a great, you know, human being and great uh, teammate because te- players, some players, you know, when they start getting older, I think some teams are like, yeah, he's talented, but do we really want him mm-hmm. in a bench role, you know, in the clubhouse when he's just this big personality? That wasn't really the case with Cameron, so – uh, I did want to touch on that again, if anyone didn't, uh, you know, watch or listen to the previous episode. But I did want to also talk about Jerry Coleman. He, uh, on this date eight years ago, this com- this comes out on Thursday, January 6th, but we're recording on Wednesday the 5th. Uh, on this day eight years ago, Jerry Coleman passed away. Uh, unfortunately, I, along with Jacob, we weren't I was obviously we're younger you know so we were kind of in the age of you know Jesse Agler and Ted Leitner uh you know Tony Gwynn Jr. now um on the radio side so we weren't really uh we don't have I at least I don't I don't have many memories of Coleman you know hearing his calls uh, but I know that a lot of people that I know you know older people that I know did uh, and he really had a big impact and even if you don't recall him or recall his memories i mean you can see him all around the ballpark at petco yeah i mean he's he's a padre legend i mean he's got his own statue right Mm -hmm. right in the middle of the ballpark right there you see it um you're the famous you can hang a star on that one every time you know a diving play in the outfield or something like that 21 junior hangs a star um he's, he's made an impact on that team and it's you know he's a lifelong padre i don't have a ton of memories of him. It's just that that one catchphrase that really resonates with me. I'm more of a um, current age kind of guy. That's kind of what I'm growing up with. But you know, you he, he, you know the name, so he's obviously very memorable in the organization. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of wanted to touch on that. Uh, the Athletic also put out a piece today uh, about one player on every team that is a trade candidate that could be traded. You know, after the lockout obviously concludes. And obviously, I think everyone could guess who the Padres one is, Eric Hosmer. They were kind of debating between Hosmer and Myers, but Hosmer was the guy. Obviously, uh, we're not going to touch on it too much because literally we could keep we could talk about this for every episode, but it's just going to be the same thing. Uh, You know, obviously, most fans want him traded. Uh, Yeah, he could be a great clubhouse leader and all that, but he hasn't performed up anywhere near the money that he's earned. Uh, he's, his defense has gotten worse since the Kansas City days. His offense has gotten worse. His production's down, power's down. Uh, just there's no point in having him on the roster when they have Cronenworth who can play first or you can bring in someone else who's you could be a better option, just to be quite honest, uh, especially the contract. The contract's obviously the big thing. That's really preventing uh, the Padres from having more, I guess, flexibility and more uh, more options to upgrade the roster at first base and all that. And so obviously it's just going to be something 
we're just gonna have to wait and see uh, if the Padres can actually find a taker, especially considering that Preller doesn't want to give up any, you know, of the top prospects, considering how many that he's given up in all of these trades, uh, you know, over the past few years. Yeah, I mean, there's no secret that the city of San Diego as a whole kind of wants him gone, at least the majority of Padre fans I've seen. Um, they want Hosmer to go, you know, he's eating up a bunch of money. Um, but, you know, at least spent a bunch of money at that wedding. Holy cow. <laughs> and that suit was hmm. interesting. <laughs> wasn't it? I'll, I'll say that. Um, no. Um, yeah, he's, he's eating a bunch of money. But I, I mean, I feel like if we got to get rid of him, we're going to have to give up one of those like top prospects like Hassel or Abrams or um, Campusano is one of those. I feel and, you know, I don't think that probably wants to do that. So I feel there's a good chance that he'll. Be around for another year here in San Diego. Sadly, yeah. but. We'll just have to hope that Michael Berdar and his whole launch angle thing, hopefully that'll <laughs> – uh, he can somehow fix that a little bit. But, you know, based on past quotes about Hosmer's just not even, like, being open to changing his swing and changing him, his approach, you know, now that he's, uh, you know – more of a veteran and just the way that baseball's the the age that we're in he's not even considering making a change uh he's just saying that you know this is where i am at my career right now something to that effect uh, i think kevin ac uh like last year talking about how uh you know that's just where i am in my career i'm not going to change uh my playing time will adjust and it's like come on dude i thought you wanted to win and obviously that's doesn't seem like that's his highest priority because he already has a ring and maybe that's just good enough for him. Uh, but I, I mean, it is a lockout right now and I wasn't really planning on talking about this. And I don't want to get into people's personal lives, but everyone is posting about it on social media. And so might as well talk about uh, the wedding. I mean, people wanted to talk about Fernando not being there and it's like yeah. his birthday was like two days later and he's, he, he doesn't stay in America during the off season, he goes back home. So that's not a big deal, but like things that we saw, like Garrett Richards was there. His hair was like, wow, that he looked a lot different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Paddock was there with his cowboy hat. So uh, who else? Um, uh, Hedges was there. Just some old friends uh, uh -huh. showed up. Uh, people were making too much of a big deal about, Manny being one of his groomsmen and he's not going to get traded because Manny's one of his groomsmen. It's like, come on guys. I think that's going a little bit overboard. Yeah. Uh, they're friends. They're obviously from Miami. They're, you know, yeah. Our reason why Manny came was because of Haas, but like, they're not going to trade They're They're th I'll say this. They're not going to not trade Hosmer because Manny's a place catch with him pregame. Like that's, yeah. that's not going to happen. Um, what, uh, what were your thoughts on, uh, this is kind of what I did plan on this last note before we get to Jake Peavy, which is kind of the main thing of this episode, your thoughts on Ken Rosenthal not being with, uh, MLB network anymore. Um, well, I didn't hear about it really. Cause, um, I'm blocked by Ken Rosenthal on Twitter. Um, really? I don't know why. Wow. I think I okay. Might've, I might've said something during the the um dodger scherzer kind of uh, yeah. thing uh -huh. i feel like I, a lot of people were blocked at that time yeah. <laughs> yeah. um i mean it's rob manfred i mean he's a he's an awful commissioner i don't really i feel like that was kind of a personal vendetta i feel but mm -hmm. um I, I saw on twitter that a lot of people weren't very happy about it i don't really have a lot of knowledge on it um I, the only thing I know about Ken is that he did a little report there on the Padres of us getting a very good pitcher, but um, ended yeah. up going to our rivals. Mm -hmm. um, not a big deal anymore, but it, it sucks that he's, you know, getting fired for that dumb of a reason for just speaking his mind. Yeah. Um, I think that it's, you know, it's a start of the new Rob Manfraud kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's going to be popping soon on Twitter, but it, it's i think it's it's unfair to him but it's it's a part of the business nowadays yeah and what i will say 
I don't I didn't mention this on the last episode about it, but what I don't get is the whole like what do you get out of it? Like what's the end goal with getting rid of him when he's one of your top guys, notable guys? I get that he criticized Rob Manfred, but one, that's his job. And two, it's not like he's Tom Verducci or uh, someone like that who, like, their only work now. I mean, Verducci writes a little bit for Sports Illustrated, but it's not like Ken is only doing stuff digitally and only voicing his opinion on MLB Network. This guy's the lead MLB writer for The Athletic. He's going to voice his opinion regardless. And what he, it's not like he's, I mean, he's criticized on MLB Network, but it's not like he was saying that stuff to that degree, like, you know, about Rob Manfred not being a player's guy and all that. He wasn't saying, to my knowledge, and I probably watch more MLB Network than you, but to my knowledge, he wasn't saying that stuff on MLB Network. It was just written in the athletic so for you to get him out of mlb network that doesn't do anything he's still gonna write it on ml on a on the athletic so you're not you're not like censoring this guy it doesn't make sense and there's no point in even censoring him like everyone knows you're bad you don't have to you know take someone off like you still have john Heyman and verducci and morosi there now the only thing that just kind of saddens me because i do watch the network all the time is now, when someone says something about the league and it's kind of like in an opinion, you know, matter, uh, are you totally going to believe it now? Because you know that Rob Manfred's watching and he's controlling. He is kind of controlling who is on the, ne- the network, because even though like if we asked Manfred, we had him on and asked him why you got rid of him. He'll just say, oh, the contract was up. We went in a different direction. What different direction? You still have everyone there. Harold Reynolds still there, Greg Amsinger, everyone's still there. Okay, you got rid of Eric Burns and uh, Chris Rose, but that wasn't opinion based. You just that was just cost cutting. If this is cost cutting, there's that's the last guy you get rid of is Ken. You get rid of guys that barely come on the network. Like so, that just didn't really make sense. Uh, I did want to just touch on that. Those few things, you know, Jerry Coleman. Uh, eight years ago to this day, passing away, uh, Rosenthal not at MLB Network anymore and Cameron Maven retiring and kind of just be a little funny with what happened at Haas's uh, Florida wedding. Uh, Blake Honestly. Snell was there too. Uh, a lot of people were there. A lot of people were there. Um, and it looked like he totally spent a lot of money on that. Um, he probably spent more money there at that wedding than what he's earned, you know, war wise with the Padres, just to be quite honest. So uh, maybe that's a dig or maybe that's just being honest uh, or both. Um, But the main part, the main, (laughs) the main thing in this episode is Jake Peavy and his hall of fame case on episode 85, which you can look at. I said, I went over my three players. I'm not going to say who they are if I, cause I want you to go listen and watch it. But uh, there's the three players that I said, that I thought should get into the Hall of Fame. And the three are not Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Andy Pettit. So I'll say that, A-Rod. I will say that. So, um, But one guy that's on the ballot, new guy this year, is Jake Peavy. Um, former Padre. To me, obviously, I remember him as a Padre. Most Some people might me- remember him you know, as a Giant or a Red Sox because that's when he won the World Series with. But... For me, obviously, a Padre won the 2007 Cy Young Award there. Um, And as we're talking about his Hall of Fame case, uh, sorry, podcast people, you can look it up. But for the YouTube audience, and we'll start that kind of now, I will be sharing this YouTube video and kind of just keep it on a loop. Just uh, PV and his Padres, you know, highlights. Um, Now, what I'm talking about with his Hall of Fame case it's not a whole, it's not great. Uh, he's not going to get in, I don't think. Uh, that will be a very, very huge surprise if he does get in. Um, but I, I did want to talk about it because he is a Padre. Uh, you know, the Bill James Hall of Fame career standards rate, which I talked about in the last episode, just measures on a scale of zero to 100, just measures his, uh, you know, his likeliness of getting in 
uh, matching up his stats with guys that did get in. And his uh, rate is 27. So that's well above, uh, well below the 50 average rate. So there's, he's not getting in. Uh, but I, I still wanted to go over his career and some pro PV cases, I guess, and kind of get your take on that, Jacob. But PV's career went from 2002 to 2016, 15 seasons, four teams. Again, the Padres, uh, the White Sox, uh, the Giants, and the Red Sox. Uh, four seasons he had with an ERA under, uh, under three. Five seasons with at least 200 innings pitched. He had seven years with at least 30 games started, so he was available. There mm-hmm. were injuries, which I'll get to, which didn't help his case, but mo- for most of his prime, he was available, and he was pitching solid innings. Mm-hmm. So that is kind of a pro PV thing there. Uh, three-time All-Star, two-time World Series champ, like I mentioned, with Boston and, uh, and uh, San Francisco. He won a gold glove in 2012. He had the, the ERA title twice in his career. Uh, his best years, like I mentioned, they were with the Padres, a 3.29 ERA career with the Padres and 212 starts, 1,342 and a two-third inning pitched, uh, 1,348 strikeouts, won the Cy Young in 2007, the, tri- the pitching triple crown, uh, wins strikeouts ERA, If for those who don't know, in 2007 as well. I mean, that year he was absolutely nasty. Um those watching those highlights is absolutely amazing. Uh, I think people forget how great he was that year. Mm. Uh, and I know not to out you, Jacob, but Pete, before when we were, you know, just oh, talking yeah. before the episode, he's like, Jacob was just like, he, he's won a site. He won a site young, like yeah. I kind of forgot. Okay. Those uniforms, by the way, on this YouTube, those Ooh. are disgusting. Uh, yeah. But um <laughs> I just wanted to say, just as we're watching that, he did just strike out Pujols there. But, uh, yeah, I think I think that, you know, he's his number – in terms of his legacy with the Padres, his legacy is I think his number should eventually get retired. Uh, yeah. com- number 44, not just – not just, uh, you know, his numbers, but he and Musgrove because Musgrove obviously with the 44 – and the impact that Musgrove now is having and PV, PV obviously winning a Cy Young Award. There's not many in the Padres history. Obviously, Randy Jones took one home uh, in in the 70s. Wait, uh, yeah. But I think that, you know, combining Musgrove with the no-hitter, obviously that was really historic. And what he's going to do, I expect them to get an extension done. Seems like he really wants to be here. Yeah, Finish yeah. out his career, hopefully, with the Padres. I mean, he was – he was great last year. And if he continues to do that, and then you combine that with PV, um, and hopefully, you know, the Padres are in a World Series with Musgrove on the team soon, um, that number should get retired. And preferably, I don't know about you, I would substitute that with number six, the Steve Garvey number. That shouldn't even be retired. I don't even, that's, there's a re, there's a Hall of Fame. You can put Garvey there. Uh, but to retire is a number based off of one moment where they didn't even win the World Series. And now they have two World Series appearances with it. Uh, I think 44 is a better number to retire than number six when Garvey's not even remembered as a pot. He doesn't even he remembers himself as a Dodger, not even as a Padre. So um, I think I mean, that's another conversation for another day. But in terms of his impact, Jacob, just what do you say about his impact? as a Padre, uh, and we'll, we'll keep talking about his Hall of Fame case, but just first about, you know, his impact as a Padre. I mean, his impact was like, it's no joke. Um, when we were kids, I would pretend to, like, pitch like Jake Peavy because, I mean, my name's Jacob, his name's Jake. You know, we would joke around like that. Um, I remember him a lot. I used to play a video game where I would only use him. Um, you know, he was definitely a fan favorite. You'd go to games and you'd hope he's pitching. Um, you remember that team with, you know, Cleo Green, um, you know, we played with Adrian Gonzalez for a little there. Um, and then I look at the stats here and you really see how dominant he really was. Yeah. Um, as you know, you told me, you know, he won a Cy Young in that 07 season. And then you just look at those stats. He's pitched in insanely over, you know, 200 mm-hmm. innings, you know, under a two or three ERA, um, triple crown that it's just, he's remembered as one of the, greatest pottery pitchers of all time you know 
could debatably the greatest, you know, you could obviously do it with like Randy Jones, you know, it's up there. Um, but, you know, definitely, you know, made an impact on the city for sure. You know, I think that the number should be retired, but even now, I mean, I think Musgrove should be the last one to ever wear that number. Um, definitely replace that number six. I see a lot of people talking about six and 31 not being there, but six for sure. 31, I think, should stay since he did enter as a Padre in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, but 44 for sure should be retired. You know, Jake Peavy, um, great, great pitcher. Impact on the Padres was just – you could talk about it for days. Um, he was just an, an impressive and, you know, uh, an impactful pitcher on this team. You know, he'll be remembered for sure as a Padre. Yeah, he'll he'll be remembered as a Padre. Uh, I just think the distinction, like, Trevor Hoffman is, you know, one of the greatest closers of all time. Jake Peavy's not one of the greatest starting pitchers of all time um in the Padres history yeah but in terms of major league baseball so I I think that's a big distinction about his hall of fame case um yeah like we mentioned yeah I think but talking to just keep going on about the hall of fame case his there are some pros like how he pitched in the postseason for those world series winning teams that he was a part of uh, with the Red Sox in 2013 and the ALDS went five and two thirds, only gave it one run, didn't walk anyone. Uh, in the World Series that year, he went four innings, gave up two runs, four strikeouts, one walk. So those are good numbers in the postseason for a team that ended up winning the World Series. So, um, you know, in 2014 with the Giants, NLDS, five and two thirds innings, no runs. Uh, 2014 NLCS with the Giants, four innings, two runs. So these are good numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. 2014 World Series, he gave a bunch of runs, but I guess they're still innings. They still ended up winning. Um, so I think that, you know, that 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 does help him. In terms of if I was a voter, you know, if someone was like Nolan Ryan great, like in the regular season and stunk it up in the postseason, like they're still going to get in. But I think that what puts someone over the top is someone that does really perform well, like Mike Mussina, like, Maybe he was with the Yankees, Orioles. He he uh he did have good regular season stats. You have to to be a Hall of Famer because you just play more games in the regular season. But he pitched well in the postseason. He had that, you know, mentality that I'm not coming out of this game until I say so. Like and that and Peavy certainly had that. Uh, I think that would that's what made him fun to watch. He had that Max Scherzer to the current people that watch MLB now. It's like he had that Max Scherzer, you know, attitude and talking to himself and grunting uh he was just he was fun to watch and even just fun to i mean he's someone that i can watch highlights of all day like he's just some of the he's just one of those guys where like he really left it all out there on the mound regardless of when he pitched um so i think he definitely has a lasting impact at least on the Padres organization and i know giants fans will remember him red sox fans will remember him because you know he did bring a title uh, to their town um, but again at the end of the day his his hall of fame case just isn't it's not really there isn't much of a case he's kind of go for me he's going to go into one of those categories of really good just not, not great really, really great um, you know his innings weren't high enough after those prime years in San Diego his innings weren't high enough consistently there either he experienced things that held him back he experienced back strains fractured rib, strained right adductor, right shoulder surgery he had um, after being traded to the White Sox in that Clayton Richard deal. By the way, there's we did talk to him. I did talk to Clayton uh, this offseason. You can go wish, listen and watch that episode. Uh, in that Clayton Richard deal, after that trade happened, his next seven seasons, he only had two seasons. I was looking this up. He only had two seasons with his ERA under four. So he just didn't have – even even the simple stats just weren't good enough consistently like for 10 years, which is kind of like I like that benchmark for me, at least just 10 years of really good stats. Uh, yeah, it yeah. just wasn't really there again. The injuries didn't help him. Uh, but w is there anything else that you'd add about, I guess, his pros and then obviously his cons of his Hall of Fame, you know, case? Um, I mean, you kind of covered them all. I mean, there's not a ton he was just he was a really really solid really good pitcher for a little while and then you know 
he, he battled some some tough injuries that kind of held him back. And, you know, it's unfortunate to think, you know, what could have happened if he didn't get those. But, I mean, three-time All-Star, um, Cy Young Award winner, that one dominant season. Um, and, I mean, I, I don't know if it means much from a pitcher, but he was a gold glover too. So, there's that. I mean, you know, there's, there's not much else. He was just a really good pitcher. He was an ace for a team for almost a decade. Um, I, I, that's pretty much it. I mean, he, he, I don't think he'll be in the Hall of Fame uh, as much as I want him to as a biased Padre fan. Um, but, you know, speaking truthfully, as just an MLB fan, he he probably doesn't deserve to be in there compared to, you know, the other people in it, I'd say. Yeah, no, he'll – is he in the – is he officially in the Padre Hall of Fame? I don't think so yet. I don't think so yet. I, I think he'll make he'll make it into that for sure. It's just the, um, the Major League one, it's it, – that'll be a little tougher to get into, I think, for him. Yeah, the Major League one, I don't think he has any shot, but – Padres obviously he will he should and I think the numbers should be retired um along with 23 in a couple of decades hopefully if that keeps going um so with Agon obviously and then obviously oh, yeah. um so I think or didn't uh what number did Greg Vaughn wear for some reason I'm thinking someone or Phil Nevin wore, wore 23 right I think it was Neville yeah yeah um I think, if I remember right. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch on uh, Jake Peavy, his Hall of Fame case. I know there's not a whole lot going on now, uh, you know, with the lockout and everything. And Jeff Passan had an article out, I think, yesterday, uh, which was Tuesday because recording is on a Wednesday, about how there's been no talk uh, from either side since December or like substantial conversations. Uh, so that's going exactly as we predicted, not well. Um, so yeah. I think that, that, like I mentioned, like a month ago, that February deadline, that, or not deadline, the February date, uh, February 1st is probably something that hopefully conversations pick up at some point, uh, because then if they want to start on time, spring training a couple weeks away, uh, and spring training is for the pitchers. So Maybe the hitters will be like, yeah, we don't need these conversations now, but the pitchers are probably going to feel like they want to uh, to get those going, you know, so that they can face batters. But it's one thing to throw, uh, at least I'd imagine. I never pitched in the big leagues, obviously, but I'd imagine that pitching on a mound is great, but facing live hitters swinging against you in game is different than obviously building up. Yeah. Just having that routine. Uh, you know, the new guys, the Max Scherzers of the world wanting to, you know, go to the Mets and, you know, experience that with teammates and just, you know, the the, uh, the Robert Suarez is, the Luis Garcia is just to get something, you know, under their feet, you know, with the Padres and spring training. So hopefully mm -hmm. those conversations, you know, pick up. Um, but anything else you want to talk about? I think uh, that's it that we can do for the week. We have another interview coming up at least scheduled uh next week with a former executive in baseball so stay tuned uh, for that um but yeah i think i think that's it right um just a touch up uh phil nevin and greg vaughn both wore number 23 okay so i was with, thinking right okay yeah along with padre legend yonder alonzo so okay. yeah and yeah. and that one one couple weeks of uh carlos villanueva where he was like rookie yeah the yeah, like that um, same year. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking there. I was, I remember at school with friends, I was like, "Yeah, rookie of the year over Cody Bellinger." It's like, yeah, I don't know what I was saying <laughs> there, but uh, I, I remember he hit three home runs in a game uh, mm -hmm. against the Rockies. Uh, sent one up to the second deck, and that was yeah. like one of the highlights of the season. Uh, I don't know where the heck Carlos Villanueva is right now. Uh, I just... think like Korea or something, but. Uh, like Spangenberg, Corey Spangenberg's, I think, there, too. Oh. Uh, Galvis went to, like, Japan or something, so they got former Padres all over the place there uh, during those rebuilding years, mm -hmm. or a long, long rebuilding years. Um, <laughs> like decades of rebuilding. Yeah. <laughs> what years are you talking about, Ben? Yeah, a lot. Um, <laughs> all right, so I that, think that's pretty much the episode, episode 86. Again, at Talking Fires, Twitter, Instagram. You can always ask us questions that we'll feature you 
in a podcast episode, just mention us and we'll get to those. Uh, YouTube, subscribe there and just stay tuned till next week. We'll have some a couple episodes probably next week as well. Uh, ben Fan, Jacob Zimmerman uh, signing off. Until next time, let's go Padres and let's get some conversations going uh, with this whole uh, lockout thing. Okay.